All right, here's our next victim. It's a nice old uh, 1940s shortwave set. It's got an eye tube. It's an Air Chief. I don't know what the heck, who makes that. Got original knobs. Um, got some push buttons. That it, push buttons don't work. They have to be lubricated up. Okay. Um, that knob works. We've got broadcast. It's got two bands. Two. Um, it's got the regular broadcast and it's got a 6 to 18 short wave. Okay. We'll see if we can um, get this thing working and then um, we'll do a little work. We got some um, veneer that's coming loose but it looks like it's all there so it should be just a little gluey. We got one piece that's missing here. No problem. A little square, that's easy to do. A little piece over here, that's easy to do. The rest of it, it looks like it's all present. We just have to glue it down a little bit. So this will make a nice looking little short wave set. Uh, there's nothing much on the short wave anymore. Uh, you have to, in order to get anything at all, you have to have a really good antenna. Most people don't have. Okay. Oh, here's our, our broadcast band antenna. Now somebody's worked on this. This is not original wiring here. Somebody's worked on this. We have six active tubes and then an I tube. Seven tubes total. Okay, these are not the original bottom screws. These screws are hardware store screws, so it has been worked on. It's not a particularly collectible radio. Uh, it, it's okay if you're just going to have one radio in your collection. If, you're, if you just want an old 40s radio, this is fine. This is good radio. Okay. The speaker wires are original. Let's make a quick measurement on the speaker here. We'll see if the speaker's good or bad. we got a field coil in it. All right. Good. Good. Okay. Speaker is good. That, that's a very good sign. Okay. Out it comes. Oh, like that. Oh my goodness. Look at this. <laughs> we got eggs in here. Some kind of bird or something laid eggs in here. <laughs> Now for to take a look. Aha! Okay, it's been recapped. Okay, this may be quite a gravy situation. This might be one where all we have to do is um, a bunch of mechanical work. It, it's been completely recapped. Um, all right, let's let's go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. This this radio may work. It may work. The speaker is in perfect condition. The chassis has got some rust on it. They cleaned it completely, but they didn't lacquer it, so it got rusty. It, it's, um, you know, if you do a chassis, you always want to uh, spray it with clear lacquer so it doesn't rust. All right, here goes. Okay, this one turns it on. Yep, here she comes. Okay, reading 34 watts. Um, that's okay. It means the transformer's okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> iTube is good. Bright green iTube. Okay, manual. Okay. Okay, so it's basically working. It's just got a whole lot of dirty stuff in it. A whole lot of dirty stuff in it. We'll have to just go through it from one end to the other. All right. 
The place we've got trouble now is this dial. I'm going to try three turns and see what happens. Okay, we may not be able to get it to do. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, it's all the way up, so this has to be here. Okay, now we'll go back. Use this stuff here. Okay, I'm just putting a little dab on each side of that. Rider. So now that can't slip on there. Okay, that gets the dial working. Unquestionably. Okay. Unquestionably, there is a problem with the with the radio itself. The um, the wire does not look like this is this wire is not 1940s wire. This is this is modern wire. So I suspect that this was a kit radio, or somebody dismantled the radio totally and rebuilt it. Okay, let me get a piece of paper and we'll mark the tubes. Okay, this is a 513. This one. Okay. Okay, that's going to be the power tube. Okay, that's the power tube. I'm going to call it a 6F6. Okay. That gets us our tube layout. Okay, the plate is 6. Grid is 2. Cathode is 3. And that is 7, 8. Trace these wires. Okay, this is going to be some B plus. Okay, that goes to there. And goes over to there. Okay. 5Y3 to there. Okay, so that's all standard wiring there. So that's got a, a filter capacitor, and it's got a big fat 0.25 going to ground. Okay, so that's okay. Now I want to look at 4 and 5. Okay, I'm going to, this one here is a little bit in the way. I'm going to pull that. Okay, 4 and 5 are together. Okay, and that goes to the IF. Okay, then, okay, we come out of the IF. Whew. 
That's crazy. This one goes the eye tube. Okay. Oh yeah. That sucker's in there tight now. Okay, let's fire it up. voltage on there. It's 400 volts on that one. Woo! That'll, that'll give you a good jump. That'll wake you up. <laughs> See, now I can wiggle that and it doesn't give all that noise. Okay? <laughs> hey! Just because you're experienced doesn't mean you get doesn't get bit. You don't get bit every once in a while. get bit every once in a while you get get a little get a little careless all right let's go up to the top okay there's 1600 okay let me set the generator I'm testing the oscillator to see, okay, to test the oscillator to see it's going, all right, I'm putting the scope probe I'm putting the scope probe next to the oscillator section of the tuning condenser, okay, see when I put it near it, see we get the, uh, we get the oscillator, we don't have to actually touch it, we just bring it near it and we see the oscillator signal. Look at the ground. See how we get that? See, and that's the oscillator signal. And when we turn the tuning dial, we can see that change. All right, so we've got the oscillator. We're at 1600 kilohertz, but we're not picking anything up. Okay, right now we've got the generator set to 1600, and we should be picking it up like all get out. Okay, now we have to run from the volume control over here to the grid. We have to use a shielded wire. We can't put that grid hanging out like it's doing. We need a shielded wire. So we'll put a piece of coax in. See, they got a, a long piece of wire going to the grid of that audio tube. It's, it's, it's eight inches of wire there. It's not shielded. And that is, I'm pretty sure, what's causing that, uh, causing that oscillation. We'll find out. I'm going to put a piece of coax in there. Okay. Alright, now we're going to come back down there, through there, and get to the volume control. Okay, how much? Okay, that much? We'll get it. See, that much wire. That's going to pick up everything and feed it, feed it through. Okay, let's just go with shielded wire. Okay, it goes to there and through the hole onto it. Okay, I'm gonna cut it right here. Okay.
Alright, for this application we only have to ground the shield on one end. Some applications you have to ground the shield on both ends and some you'd only, only ground it on one end. Okay, this one here, one end, is completely satisfactory. That gets shielded wire on the audio amp input. Here we don't get any more screeching. Okay, that gets rid of the audio feedback. That one is the damn scope. See, shut the scope off, that disappears. It's coming from that damn switching supply in the scope. Okay. There's no iTube. All right, we still got trouble. The iTube's not um, iTube's not changing. Um, all right, let's see what the AGC voltage is. Oh, 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 no, 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 we're reading, oh, next to nothing to ground, okay, what are we reading anyway, on 1k scale, Oh my god, it's the next to nothing. Oh, 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 they got something completely wrong here. All right, let me pull, pull those wires off of there. That's, that's why we don't get the iTube. Okay. Black wire off. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's one of the IF cans. Okay, did that do it? Okay, that did it. Okay, the other one goes to the uh, one goes to the I tube and one goes to the front end. Now the one going to the front end is doing okay because we're sitting here. That's on here. We're reading what? No, we aren't. We aren't doing okay. I wasn't contacting. Okay, what about this one? Okay, that one's okay. Now, we've got another one going to, okay, this one goes to the front end. Okay, this something here is the problem. This wire reads a few hundred ohms to ground. Well, it's like it was something caught down in there. Something was caught in the um, switch. When I uh, worked the switch, it, it came okay. times 100k, got one to ground, one to here, we're reading two megs. That's correct. I don't know what it was. It was something that was caught in that switch, and when I turned it, it fixed it. 
All right, let's turn it back on. Looks good. Power on. <laughs> it's still not doing anything. Yeah, it is. That, that sucks. It should have a lot more AGC than that. All right, let's see what the hell. Okay, let's, let's go with it. Okay, I want to... Okay, two volts per scale. Now I want to get out of here. Why? We're not getting any AGC on this thing at all. Uh, if you follow, if you, so if you follow along the lines of U of H, or even uh, or even past that. Okay, we we got a trouble with the RF section. That's putting the antenna straight on the grid, so the antenna is not getting to the damn grid. All right, kill the power generator. Okay, what we're gonna do? <laughs> we're gonna hook the hook the generator straight to the input. I'm going to look on pin 1 of the um, tube, the first grid of the tube. We're sitting at 800 and we're reading 1100 here. I, that's shitty. That is really shitty. It should be the hell of a lot better than that. There, there's no damn trimmers on it though. You, you don't have any trimmers to set the damn thing. Okay, we'll have to dick with that. That's where the problem is. See, we get down here, 800, and it, what the, what the hell? 670. <laughs> God, it's off by fucking, you know, 200 kilohertz. All right, now, the, one of the major problems here is this piece of wire connecting the antenna onto the radio. Not only is it way too long, but they had it laced up, bundled. This increased the capacitance between the wires tremendously, and that's what's causing the frequency of the antenna to be completely out of line with what it should be. All right, plans have changed. As it turns out, the original antenna was on here. Uh, the wires from here going all the way over to the connector and down into the radio have so much capacitance that there isn't any way that you can make the frequency of the antenna match the dial markings on the dial. The, the capacitance loading the coil uh, it makes it so nonlinear that if you get the bottom end matching the top ends off and the top end on and the bottom end is off. So what we're going to do, we're going to completely change the input circuit and we'll use an external antenna on the radio. It won't be a, a loop antenna anymore. So I've got a, an antenna coil here and I've adjusted the number of turns on it to make it to where it um, uh, matches the tuning condenser and this one matches, it tracks all the way across because we're going to put the Put the coil just right at the connector here, so we have no capacitance added in from um, all that wire that was in there. Okay, so I have to have some wire. We got, I'm going to mount the uh, mount the coil on the old um, plug and just plug it in there, right where where that connector is. It'll it'll fit down in there. Okay, I need some stiff straight wire. Right, they are. Are they the fighting spiders? 
Okay. Any I two books? All right. That looks good. Okay, that's good. Got our little coil in there and wired up. Had a bad solder joint on there, which is why it wasn't working right. But it's working now. So next we have to do cabinet work. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. All right, first thing we got to do is various um, veneer work here. We'll just do a little bluing here. It's not in too bad a condition. It's, it's, it's got a lot of little loose places here, but it's, it's really surprisingly okay. Most of it's okay. Okay, I'm just going to take a little piece of tape. Hold it down with some tape there while it dries. Okay, look. Now, we've got a whole bunch of places here. This one there. Now, that one there, I'm going to make a piece. This part taken care of first. Okay, I've got got some veneer here. All right, that looks good. This is the worst part right here. Okay, we're just going to slot the glue on there.
Okay, that is not going to hold good, so I need a little piece of wood. on there. Okay, this little one we'll fix later. Okay, that takes care of that place right there. Okay. All right, now we'll let this stuff harden and then we'll go back and fill. All right, it's been sitting there for two hours. Let's go ahead and, um, all right, get all this tape off of here. I got some lead to put on there. Okay, now I'm gonna let that harden. See that? That's come loose, okay? We'll put glue.
Now, we'll let that harden. Okie doke, uh, been two hours. Hmm. All right, that's good and solid. Okie doke. Okay, that gets, gets all the wood that we're going to glue taken care of. Okay. We're sitting at 100 degrees right now here in Houston, June. All right, looks good. Looks good. Okay. All right, this has been drying for a few hours. Oh yeah, much, much better. See, that piece across there had delaminated and that made it very fragile, but now it's glued back and it's solid. All right, next thing to do, we're going to wipe it off and we're going to stain it. We just wipe off the dust from the uh, sanding. <sighs> right now it's 99 out here. 99 degrees. I gotta get done quick here. I just came out of the air conditioning, so I, I've got enough coolness in me to, to last for about five minutes. All right, we're gonna use plain old um, cheap Minwax uh, hardware store dark black dark um, walnut. Definitely going to look good. Here's a place I didn't sand. <laughs> what a mess, what a mess, okay. You can sand it after you've started uh, staining. a uh, really professional super job on this because it's a um, 
it's a cheap radio. It, it's going to go um, go in the antique store for fifty bucks. So uh, you know, we're not going to spend hours. That'll have okay. We've got that radio completely stained and dry. Now we're going to go ahead and put the uh, lacquer on it. Dried, put another coat. Okay, there's one thing I forgot to do here, and that's put a fuse. We're going to go ahead and put a fuse in here so that, in case we have a failure, we don't burn up the transformer. I'm just going to cut this cord. Break that plating off of there, that nickel plating, and it makes it easier to solder. Okay, that gets us a fuse put in there, so if we have any short in there for any reason, it'll uh, protect the uh, transformer. Well, hi there, little girl. Hi there, little girl. Did you come to hell? Did you come to hell? Oh, come here, little kitty. Yes. Here, look in the camera. Look in the camera and say hi to everybody. <laughs> yeah, you kitty. She was a bad girl today. Had a glass of water sitting on the table. She bumped into it and knocked it over. With a full glass, too. And ice cubes and water went all over the computer and keyboard. and ugh. But she's just a little sweetie. Alright, first 
I have to put the speaker back in. Okay. Okay, we're too low. I've got to have spacers of approximately an eighth of an inch. Okay. But these have to be put <clears throat> when they're not going to interfere with the screws. Okay, now I've got a should do it. Okay. That's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Okay. Now, what I have to do, I got to get screws up in the bottom to keep it from moving. If I go up in there with a screwdriver, I should be able to feel where the holes are and get those get those bottom screws in. Okay, there's okay, it's right there. Okay, there's two of them. Okay, now what I want to do, I want to get that speaker. Okay, now I can put this on here. Mickey Mouse screws here. Back on so I don't screw it up any more than it's already screwed up. Okay, now I've got another bottom screw. That's centered up perfectly. Now I've got to tighten them down. Okay. Now I've got little places here that are screwed up. That works very well. It's brown marks a lot, and that that takes care of it. It takes the places that are miscolored and takes care of them. Okay, the next thing we've got knobs. Okay, okay. Here. Okay. 
<laughs> that is sure pure crap. I just hope to hell the radio works. If it works, I won't have to take it out again, and it'll be okay. Okay. It goes like this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we can give it a try. Okay, got an antenna here. Got it. Okay, good. Is not sure, but it's really going to be bad for crime in Houston. Everybody said, yeah, yeah, they're just saying things like that because they know that they won't make as much money if the bonds are lowered to a... Okay. Okay, that's it. That's it. Okay. That looks really nice. Okay. Now, the short wave is not very good, but the rest of the main radio works. It's got a good eye to it. Okay, that's it.